Join the conversation and welcome to Inside Voice. Welcome friends. For 32 years, our guest today has walked alongside families and offered support for individuals in their healing journey. She's an incredible, compassionate woman and the founder of Greenleaf Psychological Services. She is my friend, and I'm so glad to have you on the program today, Dr. Barbara Lowe. Welcome. I am so thrilled to be here. I know we're going to talk about healing of the heart, healing trauma, and I know that this is yeah. where we are so simpatico. Yes, we are. You know this is my passion, and I certainly don't have the education that you do, but it is certainly my heart and my calling from, you know, probably more the spiritual side of things. But I love the fact that you ha can bring uh, the world of psychology, the knowledge that you've learned over the years and theology, spiritual things together, because we're really made up of different parts uh, at, at, when we, when we, address the whole person, uh, you know, there are things that can get lost in the process of trying to heal and we really need to address um, the whole person. So tell us a little bit first though about Greenleaf and uh, you know, what it, what it is that you're supporting there. Well, I'm the owner of Greenleaf Psychological and Support Services. We've been open for 10 and a half years and we have, ooh, we're close to 30, there's close to 30 of us and we're in a big growth phase. We have developed a training program. We're working on credentialing for that for CEUs and we are going to expand that nationally. My, uh, a big part of my calling is to equip a therapist in the science we know so wow. much about trauma healing. So, you know, always have a little yeah. handy. <laughs> I love that. And uh, so equip them in the science of healing. And it's so exciting, the things that we are learning uh, about trauma healing. And then also for therapists that request it, because we're very client-centered uh, and, and we respect mm -hmm. self-determination in the field of psychology, uh, integration of faith. And I am, yeah. I, you know, I love the Lord and he has done such a tremendous work in my life. And so where the client consents and wants it, I love bringing in not just scripture, not just uh, that mm. attachment figure, but real genuine encounters with the sacred in the therapy session. Ooh. Mm. And, oh yes. man, that's good. Yes. <laughs> and I have people who fly in from out of state, out of country to spend a couple of days with me and do these intensives oh. where they see tremendous healing using the science. And if they want to integrate faith using the faith as well. Oh, that's amazing. So, you know, one of the things that has been a concern for me and, and the reason I love that, that we're going here, I, I want you to really unpack that for us because in the church, traditionally, uh, you know, psychology has been demonized and I, I want you to address that. But um, I think that we're starting to come around where, you know, that ship is turning. We're realizing that we're dealing with mental health issues right within the church. And, you know, it's been written uh, in the New York Times. It, there was a recent article that said that the, there's a rising tide of depression and anxiety globally right now. So people, human beings, are in not in a good place. And so I think that, you know, we've got to stop doing it the way we've done it for so many years and come to the table where we begin to learn the science behind healing and how do we integrate? I mean, God is the creator of science. Yes. So speak to that for yes. a minute. Well, I love practicing what's called integrative psychology. And from that mindset, and that's what I practice in my my practice in North Carolina. And so it, from mm -hmm. that place, we believe that first of all, God speaks through the Bible. God speaks through his spirit and God speaks right. through the Bible, but God also speaks mm -hmm. through nature. Now, what is yeah. science if it's not nature, right? Science mm -hmm. is nature. So God speaks through science as well. Now, as a Christian in my own personal belief system, if what science seems to be saying is, uh, is contrary to the Bible, of course, as a Christian in my own personal life, I'm going to choose, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I agree with the word of God, 
Now I'm client centered right. with my clients. And so I don't put my beliefs upon my clients. Uh, you know, right. I, I have a public fiduciary as a psychologist. I'm government boarded to respect people's self-determination. Uh, but, sure. uh, but where they will allow me to, I will in, bring in that faith and, uh, and be able to integrate that. Now, there's some good reasons mm -hmm. why Christians have uh, felt suspicious about psychology. And I think I'm kind of like, let's rip off the mandate. Let's talk about this. Because there has, good. over the past 100 years, there's been what is called the secular revolution, where in a lot of people's minds, psychology has replaced religion. And that has felt mm -hmm. like a threat to the church. And what I'd like to say mm -hmm. is I'd like to call the church to uh, what we've done with medicine, where we've said, hey, the science of medicine is not a threat to our uh, our sacred, our sacrosanct beliefs. And so what we can do is in, engage in the science, right? Science is not moral. Science just tells us what is. What we've learned from mm -hmm. science is that we can activate where the where the past is present, where where we have a, a a problem that's cyclic in our life, and we keep going through the same thing. And I know I'm speaking mm -hmm. to approximately a hundred percent of all viewers, right? So we have yes. a problem <laughs> going on, and and we don't know how to get out of it. We're stuck in it, and it, it's happening. <clears throat> It's really coming from deep within the brain, these the, the, uh, our yeah. limbic system, and then we get stuck in our fight or flight yes. down here. So why why does this keep happening? Why and I, I try to get insight and it doesn't work. Well, what we know from the science is so exciting is that if we can yeah. open up, if we can find out what it's linked to in the past, open up through mm -hmm. experience that memory. We have five and a half, we have about five to six hours to create a mismatch experience and to create some counter learning in that what's called the window, the uh, the window of reconciliation. And then we can actually mm -hmm. have a true transformation. What is also exciting about this, uh, Brenda, is next week I'm going to actually in a couple of days, I'm going to go be with the heads of many of the inner healing ministries. Sozo, I'll be with Donna Da Silva. I'll be with Dr. Carl Lehman, the, the head of a manual approach, the head of heart sync. They're all using this science, even if they don't know it mm. in their inner healing methods. <laughs> and you know, oh, come on. <clears throat> you, you see Jesus knew all along. No, there yeah. is re I understand that Christians have felt threatened uh, because this the, mm -hmm. We've seen the secularizing, the, the secularization of society, and we know that 30% uh, of young people today identify as non-religious. There's been a big shift yeah. over the past 20 years, and mm -hmm. psychology has really risen up within that. However, I believe it's time to say, hey, mm -hmm. this is kind of like medicine. It's helping people. And as long as we are not leaving our values, which keep Jesus at the center and not the self, Right? right. What's at the center of the mm -hmm. life of a Christian, Jesus. And we can apply the science without fear. Yes. Oh, man, that's good. That is powerful because fear is what grips us and then imprisons us to those narratives that will keep us marginalized, keep us from healing and being whole. And, uh, you know, the opposite of fear, I was thinking about this the other day, is perfect love. Mm -hmm. And so that is why Christ, the Holy Spirit, is integral. If When we want healing, we first go to the healer. But, you know, uh, in my own journey of healing, and listen, it's a progressive thing. Uh, I've come so far from the traumas behind me, and there were many. But, you know, there were images that I had done that sh revealed that I had PTSD. Uh, there were, you know, things literally on my brain uh, that they discovered and, and informed me about. But one of the things that I learned about, too, was this thing about the, the parasympathetic nerve mm -hmm. and, and its relation to trauma. Can, uh, can you talk to that a little bit? Because, uh, you know, for our audience, let's just dumb it down a little bit. <laughs> Because, you know, they might not understand certain terms, but let's let's just talk about that and why it's important to address those things along with. We can't just throw a scripture at something and think that that's going to just take it, take care of the problem. Yes. Well, the main way Jesus healed was through encounter. And that that is my favorite way to see healing. 
but uh, just like with medicine, like, like we love it when Jesus heals us physically with an encounter and it's just boom. But just like with medicine, sometimes it is an incremental change, right? Mm. Uh, so I would love to talk about the nervous system. I spent a couple of years studying the nervous system as a somatic experiencing practitioner. You know, really, if you take right. away our, uh, especially in our in our relationship with our significant other if you take away like flesh bone and you just kind of leave that nervous system that really is the problem mm. right where we react wow. uh, it, where we get out of our right brain where we get into the uh, the fight flight freeze where we're triggered so our nervous system really is both so much of the problem and so much of the solution when we have mm. trauma will uh that has been unresolved and that can have a genetic component as well by the way so some of us are more genetically preloaded mm. towards ptsd but so then we have a trauma mm. let's say i uh, wasn't very loved by my mom and i see uh like i see a mother abusing a child or, or you know acting harsh with a child and so i'm triggered and maybe i i feel panicky so what happens there is i go up into sympathetic nervous system, I bump out of what's called the window of tolerance. And I'm in a place where I feel less in control of my body. Now, when I'm in that place where I'm less in control of my body, I'm also in the lower parts of my brain. That's why when we're in arguments with our with our significant others or people we have that deep attachment to, we say stupid things, right? <laughs> because this part of our wow. brain is extremely <laughs> quick. I've been guilty. And it, this part of your <laughs> yeah. brain is so quick and so yeah. stupid, right? Uh, this part of our brain is slower, wow. but smarter. <laughs> this is where we want to stay. So uh, we get into that sympathetic override. We can only stay there for so long before we get into that parasympathetic crash where we go into the collapse mm -hmm. or the freeze, you know, where you feel like you need to go fetal or you feel just flat emotionally. We yeah. want to learn to keep our nervous system in this healthy rhythm. We're still going to have ups and downs. And we want to build what I call stability skills to help us feel more alive when we're collapsing, to help us come down when we're in that sympathetic nervous mm -hmm. system override. And we also want to work in that memory reconsolidation window with someone who's skilled to help us heal so that we're not being as triggered. Now, one last thing. Another thing that really can help us come down into a nice, peaceful parasympathetic letdown is uh, safe social connection. We need uh, vitamin A attachment. We need safe, yeah. healthy attachments in our lives. Uh, and we can receive that with the Lord, with others. And we can also in part give that to ourselves. And maybe we can talk about that a little bit in the next segment. Yes, definitely. Okay, we'll be right back. Paul and Brenda Crouch here. Baby, we have great plans coming yeah, we up. <laughs> we do. We're here in Anaheim at our beautiful studio that God has provided, but what do we have coming up? We've got amazing content coming up that we're actually very excited about. We just finished season four, and we have plans to do some broadcasting from around the world, mm -hmm. uh, different locations, and God's opening doors for us. Amen. But they say you have not because you ask not. Mm -hmm. And in four years, we have never asked for a donation or any yeah. kind of support, and now we are. It's our heart to see that media is done right and that we give God glory for everything. And we just are following the call and we're doing it honest. And uh, we hope that you will catch the vision and ride this wave with us and know Amen. that it, God is gonna continue to pour more and more out as we follow in obedience to him. Amen. Go to Brenda's website. There's all kinds of resources there for giving. God bless you. BrendaCrouch.com. We're back with Dr. Barbara Lowe. And Dr. Barbara, there's something that I heard recently, uh, just coming out from what you just explained to us. I heard that science can actually prove that in our DNA, there are markers of trauma that was experienced from maybe our great grandma, as far back as our great grandmother, great grandfather. 
and that those markers are still in our DNA. And you kind of touched on this a few minutes ago. Let's talk about some of the things that it, in church terms, we might call that you know, a bloodline or generational thing. But let's talk about how the science of trauma affects us sometimes generations down. Yes. Uh, so you're talking about epigenetics and markers that can be turned on and off. And this is absolutely phenomenal because remember how in the last segment we talked about uh, God, God, science, God shows himself through science. We see that all over the Bible and or through nature and science is nature. Well, the Bible says that the curse can be passed down to, uh, you know, to the second and third generation. Mm -hmm. Well, that's what we see with these epigenetic markers that they can be passed down to the second and third generation. So, uh, you know, it's not exciting that it's trauma, but it's also, I love it when science and faith intersect yes. and just, oh, oh, come on. So exciting. <laughs> now, but here's the thing, we are not stuck with those epigenetic yes. markers. Uh, first of all, we can do a lot of things to turn on healthy, epigenetic markers. Uh, we, we can eat healthy. We can go to therapy. We can worship. We can be in fellowship. You know, we're, our brains are, it's Bible. The Bible says it's not good for man to be alone. Mm -hmm. We need to have healthy connections with others because what we know is that our brain is actually not just an individual brain. It's actually like right now, brain is amongst us. Wow. And I, I think about two with the board, right? You think about how oh, yeah. brain is amongst so us. So good. Right? And so there's a lot going on between our brains signaling to one another. Oh. Anyway, so yes, you can, there are things that are passed down and we do know that, but you can, uh, you can change those things. And a lot of the change can happen using like using the memory reconsolidation uh, process mm -hmm. that we were talking about earlier. And you can change it by just living a healthy lifestyle. Mm. That's really Doing the right yeah. things. The more right things that you do, the more right things that you think. We know from research that if I walk by a plant and speak and think negative things towards it, mm -hmm. literally there's research that if you think negative things, the plant starts to die. Wow. But if I speak life. If I think life, mm -hmm. even towards this plant, mm -hmm. it's going to thrive. Yeah. So how much more powerful are those thoughts going to be towards our own self? So, so and that good. lines right up with scripture, yeah. lines right up with scripture. And we as Christians have the mind of Christ. Mm. So we are capable of regeneration. We can participate with the restorer mm. in our own restoration. Yeah. As you held up that plant, I was thinking about when Jesus cursed the fig tree. And this is interesting because here's a little spiritual bent on this. As he approached the fig tree and he said he was looking for fruit, there was nothing there. There were all these beautiful leaves, but nothing there to feed him. And so he cursed it. And when they came back, it was Peter that noticed. And he says, Master, the, the fig tree that you cursed, it has died but it has withered from the root. And I really believe that Jesus did this for a reason. And it was to point to the fact that there are some things that put us in the frame uh, of mind um, and in our relational dynamics that we don't have any fruit to offer. And it, we're like this tree, this fruitless tree, this beautiful fruitless tree. And how does that, how well does that speak to our very narcissistic culture right now? Uh, but that, you know, some things, Dr. Barbara, have to be killed from the root. And so when we're talking yes. about, especially generational traumas, generational things that have interrupted our uh, and and conditioned our our mindsets and our cognitive biases and then we get in these family dynamics where we just don't see any hope and you know let's talk about this for a minute because people are divided how do we get to that place where we understand okay there's something in the root of me that i need to allow god to put the axe to and I want healing. How do we bridge the gap instead of always just cutting off? There's a lot of people cutting off relationships because they're so desperate for boundaries. How do we bring healing yeah. and where does that begin? Yes. 
Well, we must uh, use self-leadership. Let, let's just be honest. We have got to stop the cancel culture. And the uh, as Christians, we must go f first. We must stop the cancel culture. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm all for setting some healthy boundaries. I do understand that. You, you don't yeah. keep letting the abuser in your home. But I'm talking about uh, what's going on in our society. We, we need to get to know people for who they yeah. are. But let's start with the root in me. And I'm going to give everyone a tool that, uh, that is going to use this memory reconsolidation science. And it's something that you can use at home. And it's my tool called quadruple entry journaling. And I'm so excited because I just taught this to a whole bunch of students and professors of psychology. And I, one of the students came up to me and she's like, my life has changed. My <laughs> life has changed. I used it. I was up all night doing it. I feel so different. Wow. So you can too. And here's what I want you to do. So I want you to uh, think about a cyclic problem that we, like we had described earlier, that keeps happening in your relationships. And focus less so on the other person and what they're doing and more on the feeling, the felt sense in you of pain. And uh, you, you're feeling that pain in your body, even though a lot of times we think it's here, it's actually in our mm -hmm. body. So I want you to get in touch with what you're feeling in your body and then scroll back, kind of like we do on the internet, scroll back in time to the memory that's most connected to that body sensation. Mm. All right. And so uh, for the sake of time, since we're on TV, I'm going to go ahead and tell you what to do with that. But I assume it's going to take a little bit longer to find that. So you're going to write down what the situation is, what the memory is, and that's opening up that memory reconsolidation window. Then I want you to write down what you feel in the second column. We're doing four columns. Write down what you feel, what you're feeling in your body, you know, rage, let it all out. I mean, really get in touch with this. You have to, to open up that window, you have to get in touch with it. Then I want you to get in touch for the column number three, your most nurturing part of self. So it, it could be your, your uh, if you're a therapist, it could be your therapist part of self or your minister part of self. If you're a dad, your dad part of self. If you're a mom, maybe your mom part of self, your big sister part of self. And you're going to figure out what that younger self of you needed and meet that need. You're literally imagining back in the memory, the need being met. And usually it's a need for safety and or belonging or validation of emotions. A lot of times, even in Christian homes, there's a lack of validation towards the negative emotions. It could be, it could be a need met that was never seen, or it could be a need for safety. It could be like a mom coming in and saying, I'm never going to let you be bullied like that again. And we're going to egg their house. Mm. Like it could be a fight or flight <laughs> need, like you need to get away, but that's okay. You're not really going to egg their house, but you would have, that would have made you feel so much better back then. Okay. <laughs> And then column number four, what is Jesus saying? Mm. Or Father or Holy Spirit? Because what I find is that my clients are normal, normally feel safer with one of the three Godhead uh, figures. And so what, what is Jesus or Father or Holy Spirit saying to you in that situation? And try to say out of, yeah, but it happened. Yeah, but it didn't. Yeah, but no. God knows you were born into a war mm. that you didn't Come choose. On. And not everything that happened was from him. Mm -hmm. God is good and the devil is bad, yeah. right? When we boil it down. Yeah. And so let him tell you, oh, sweet baby girl, this is what I wanted to happen in that situation. Mm -hmm. And let him give you the re that, that redo in your, in, and just be with it. Write it. Mm -hmm. Feel it. Mm. You want to take it a step further. Here's what I want you to do. Participate in the restoration by going ahead in your adult life and giving yourself that thing. Let's say wow. your parents were busy fighting all the time and they so they ignored your request for dance lessons. Mm. Go take <laughs> a ballet lesson. Love it. Participate in restoration with your loving God. Mm, love it. Right? Yes, that's good. Let's yeah, step out, step off the triangle of pain and, and feeling like a victim and step onto the power, the triangle of the, of empowerment mm. with the Lord, Yes, co-create your restoration with the mm. Lord. So powerful. so powerful. So that's my quadruple entry journal, um, 
uh, tool, this is so powerful. This, th this in and of itself could bring people into a lot of healing. Oh yeah, that was amazing. And I think somebody actually uh, was helped just now uh, because what this does mm -hmm. is it's not some magical formula. This is helping us to be able to actually acknowledge what's going on inside of us. And if we can't, you know, the, the scripture says, Dr. Barbara, you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. So mm -hmm. in the next yes. uh, 30 seconds, I'd love for you to just encourage somebody if you wanna pray for them or just whatever word of encouragement because a lot of people are healing. Uh, somebody needs to yeah. know that there is hope and that Jesus is the healer and he, here, he is here among yes. us and he wants to walk you through this. Yes, I sense um, that I need to pray okay. if that's yes. okay. Uh, Lord, so mm -hmm. I, I sense that some of you, uh, you have a, you, you feel it right now. There's a place of pain deep within and you feel like, uh, you feel like, you even feel like you've asked Jesus to come in, but somehow it just feels so separate. But he, I'm joining with you now. Okay, there's that power yes. of that we mind, right? And we're we're together. The Lord is here. We're going to ask the Lord for an experience in that place that has felt so shut mm. out, literally like browned out, like there's no electricity, nothing there. Lord, in Jesus' name, we thank, thank you for you, coming Lord. into that place. Thank you, Lord. We thank you for coming into that part that feels so alone. And I just see him going in and literally rescuing a child from the dark yes. and bringing that child into the light. And he's saying, let the little children come to me. Mm. He's saying, all those parts are not left out anymore. So now I want you to say with me, I am not alone. I am not alone. That part is now mm. fully immersed in love. Thank you. And I want you to even go farther and imagine that part of you playing with Jesus, receiving from yes. Jesus, being with Jesus and receiving every need met. Mm, powerful. You know, there is a playful side to our father and he loves us. So Dr. Barbara, it was such a joy to have you on the program. We'll have to do this again. Yes, absolutely. Thank you for being here. And to you friends, thank you for being here, coming and joining this conversation. I know that you were blessed. So until next time, I'm Brenda Crouch.